at the turn of the 20th century, many big game hunters and professional guides in the British Empire wanted a big 50 caliber dangerous game cartridge, but they wanted it in a cheaper bolt action rifle with more capacity. The bolt action rifle was the pinnacle of rifle technology at the time and everybody wanted one. The 404 Jeffrey and 416 Rigby were huge successes, but big stopping cartridges still didn't exist for bolt guns. Out of this need, the 505 Gibbs was born and it launched a 50 caliber bullet out of a Mauser action with 6,200 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. To many serious professional hunters, this was more than a novelty, it was a need. In this video, I'll discuss the history and relevance of the legendary 505 Gibbs Dangerous Game Cartridge. At the turn of the 20th century, British Dangerous Game Cartridges were very large in size. We look at cartridges like the 404 Jeffrey, the 416 Rigby, and the 505 Gibbs, and we have to wonder why they have way more case volume than you'd ever need to reach the target velocity for the cartridge. The answer to this is simple. They weren't loaded with modern gunpowder. They were loaded with cordite. Cordite was used by the British to replace black powder. And cordite isn't necessarily a powder. It comes in strips or cord-like filaments, but cordite was not temperature stable in hot environments. These cords also take up a lot of room in a case. So cases had to be big in order to launch a bullet fast enough while keeping pressure low in hot environments. Cordite was Great Britain's answer to smokeless powder. Alfred Noble tried to sue the inventor of cordite for patent infringements. So Great Britain was stuck with cordite for a while. And with that in mind, let's talk about the 505 Gibbs. The British Empire was the largest empire in world history. At one point, 25% of the world's population lived in the British Empire. There was a period in that history between about 1840 and 1914 known as the Scramble for Africa, where 90% of the African continent went under European rule. Settlers and explorers encountered many dangerous beasts in those days in Africa, so powerful cartridges were created to deal with them. Almost all of the big bore smokeless cartridges of the day were rimmed cartridges only suitable for double rifles. Of these, the 500 Nitro Express was the king. 20 years after the invention of the 500 Nitro Express, an English gunmaker named George Gibbs was working on a 50 caliber cartridge of his own. Initially, he was going to design his 50 caliber cartridge uh, for a double rifle. But instead, George Gibbs decided to make a bolt-action cartridge that could beat the 500 Nitro Express. He put a 525 grain bullet in a huge case and loaded it so it would leave the muzzle with 6,200 foot-pounds of energy. In 1911, the 505 Gibbs was born and it was the most powerful cartridge in the world at the time. Initially, this new cartridge was called the 505 Rimless Nitro Express. It was meant as a stopping cartridge for Elephant and Rhino. George Gibbs expected very high demand for this new cartridge because bolt-action hunting rifles were the new craze at the time. Bolt guns chambered in 404 Jeffrey and 416 Rigby were quickly gaining a great reputation in Africa, and Gibbs wanted to be the first one to bring a 50 caliber bolt action elephant rifle into the game. Gibbs made his new rifles on Mauser actions with a four round capacity. The name was eventually changed to the 505 Gibbs. Unfortunately though, just as the 505 Gibbs was being sold to the public, World War I started and all British resources and manpower were directed to that effort. 
after the war, the 505 Gibbs gained traction again. But in the 1920s, the 500 Jeffrey came to the market and challenged the 505 Gibbs. The rebated rim on the 500 Jeffrey caused feeding and extraction issues with those early guns, which most considered unacceptable. So the 505 Gibbs was considered a more reliable option. When it was released, the Jeffrey had basically the same performance as the 505 Gibbs, but with considerably more pressure. Add to this the fact that the 500 Jeffrey was a cartridge of German origin, and that wasn't a very popular thing to be associated with at the time. The 505 Gibbs really took off in 1936 when Ernest Hemingway made it famous. Then J.A. Hunter further cemented the legacy of the 505 Gibbs. Accounts from the field proved that the 505 gave devastating power while remaining a very reliable cartridge in demanding conditions. Its low pressure was perfect for old powders in very hot environments. But by this time, Kynock made the only commercial 505 Gibbs ammo, and they just weren't making very much of it anymore. Then, in, then when the uh, 458 Win Mag was released in 1956, that quickly became the most prolific dangerous game cartridge because ammo for it was readily available. The 505 Gibbs was suffering a rapid death due to lack of ammunition. By 1969, Kynock completely shut down and you couldn't get 505 Gibbs ammo anymore. So after 1970, the 505 Gibbs was basically a dead cartridge. Nobody made ammo or brass for it at all. And even if you could get brass, the 505 Gibbs uses a 505 diameter bullet rather than a 510 diameter bullet that all the other 50 caliber cartridges use. So bullets were unavailable as well at the time. You had to order small private runs of 505 Gibbs ammunition from England that were extremely expensive and would take many months to get. Then something crazy happened 35 years later. In 2005, for some unexplained reason, CZ came out with a new line of 550 Magnums called the Safari Classics. And even though nobody was making factory ammo for 404 Jeffrey, 450 Rigby, or 505 Gibbs, CZ started selling rifles chambered for those cartridges, and those rifles sold like crazy. Because those rifles started selling like crazy, ammo manufacturers started selling ammunition and reloading components for those cartridges. So in 2005, CZ brought the mighty 505 Gibbs back from the grave and gave it new life. And thank you, CZ. Almost immediately after CZ released the uh, 550 Safari Classics chambered in 505, you could buy 505 Gibbs ammunition from Federal, Swift, Nosler, and Norma. Also, Kynock was making Safari ammunition again, and they immediately started making 505 Gibbs ammo. Norma and Nosler were actually selling brass, and Hornady, Barnes, Swift, and Woodley were making bullets for the 505 Gibbs. Then, in late 2019, disaster struck. We were dealt just a heart-wrenching blow when CZ permanently discontinued the 550. So the 550 was actually what was keeping the 505 Gibbs cartridge alive at the time. Within a year of the 550 being discontinued, uh, Federal, Nosler, and Hornady discontinued producing ammunition for the 505 Gibbs. Kynock hasn't made 505 Gibbs ammunition since 2020. And after the COVID pandemic cleared, only Norma and Swift are currently making ammunition for this. And only Norma is selling brass for the 505 Gibbs, which I hear they're in the process of maybe discontinuing. Hornady, Barnes, and Swift are still making bullets for the 505 Gibbs, but 
We don't know for how long. If you want a 505 Gibbs rifle, you need to buy an older used one or you need to have a custom one built. And I'll admit it, since CZ discontinued the 550, the 505 Gibbs seems to be dying a slow death again. There's another chapter in modern 505 Gibbs history that few people are aware of. The 505 Gibbs is the father of ELR cartridges or extreme long range shooting cartridges. When guys started shooting at targets out past a mile in the late 1990s, it was obvious that the 50 BMG just uh, wasn't optimal for doing that for many reasons. Um, even the really efficient 338 Lepois Magnum, uh, based on the 416 Rigby case, wasn't enough for shooting at targets well past a mile. It was then that a man by the name of John Taylor invented the 400 Taylor Magnum and shocked the world. When the war on terror started, extreme long-range sniping kind of became vogue and this is when ELR shooting became a very popular sport. In 2001, the 408 Shaytech, based on the 505 Gibbs case, was invented, and it was instantly the best ELR cartridge in the world. Then, the 416 Barrett came out, you know, and not to be outdone, the 375 Shaytech was invented, which was also based off of the 505 Gibbs case, and it would dominate the King of Two Mile competition. So the 505 Gibbs is actually part of ELR shooting history. The purpose of the 505 Gibbs is to hunt elephant or to be used as a stopping rifle for Africa professional hunters. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that the 505 Gibbs is more than suited for those tasks. Ammo and availability aside, the 505 Gibbs has one big obvious drawback. The Gibbs can't cheat physics, and that huge powder charge delivers big recoil to the shooter. Most grown men won't be able to shoot a 505 Gibbs accurately, in my opinion, and this is something to seriously consider. When you realize that a cartridge like the 458 lot delivers 6,000 foot-pounds of muzzle energy with less recoil, the 505 Gibbs immediately looks much less practical for a visiting hunter to Africa. You know, if you look at the 505 Gibbs compared to the 458 lot, they both send a bullet that's roughly the same weight at roughly the same speed, but the lot does it with half the powder and much less recoil. And in that regard, the 505 Gibbs just isn't a very practical cartridge. The first thing you'll notice when you load the 505 is that there's more space in the case than you're ever gonna need with most ball powders. You have to be careful loading the 505 because it's easy to pack this thing full of way too much powder, but some people do that anyways on purpose just for fun. There was a guy on the internet about, I don't know, 10 years ago that shot 600 grain bullets out of his 505 Gibbs at 2,600 feet per second. Just to put that in perspective, that gives you over 9,000 foot pounds of muzzle energy and puts the Gibbs right behind a cartridge like the 577 T-Rex. And just to be clear, I do not recommend doing that. Most people try to get about 2,300 feet per second with a 525 grain bullet. Just be mindful that it's gonna take over 140 grains of powder to do that. This isn't an efficient cartridge by any means and it eats large amounts of powder every time you load it. I also don't recommend reduced power loads, you know, maybe at below 2,000 feet per second for the 505 Gibbs. These big cases are susceptible to hang fires and erratic ballistics 
with small powder chargers, so watch that. My favorite powder for the 505 Gibbs is IMR7828 Shortcut. Unfortunately, I'm all out of that right now, but my backup powder when IMR7828 dries up is H1000, which is an excellent powder for the 505 Gibbs, particularly with the uh, 525 grain bullets. And uh, I like a good extruded powder that gives me good case fill with the 505, but people who like to load the 505 Gibbs on the hotter side are probably going to like a powder like a Reloader 25 a little bit better. The 505 Gibbs is kind of a pain in the ass for reloaders, mainly because finding brass can be next to impossible. As far as I know, Norma is currently the only company making 505 Gibbs brass right now, and that's almost impossible to get. And if you do find this stuff, expect to pay, you know, $225 to $250 just for 50 pieces of brass. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, Norma might be discontinuing this brass altogether, so there might not be any brass available. Also, you need to crimp this cartridge. <laughs> you need It needs kind of a crimp on the heavier side. I hate roll crimps, but you'll be forced to use the roll crimp feature on your seating die because Lee stopped selling a factory crimp die for the 505 Gibbs a few years ago. Luckily, I got one before they stopped selling them. But you probably won't be able to get a Lee factory crimp die for the 505 Gibbs right now. The only available bullets right now for the 505 Gibbs um, are from Hornady, Barnes, and Swift. And those Swift A-frames uh, in 505 diameter... Those are almost impossible to get to. Um, also, you need a large rifle magnum primer with the 505 Gibbs in order to get that enormous amount of slow burning powder to perform. In my opinion, reloading the 505 Gibbs is kind of a pain in the ass these days. This video was a tale of a legendary dangerous game cartridge that once held the title of the world's most powerful dangerous game cartridge. It's hunted and culled an untold number of elephants and is said to be the most reliable 50 caliber dangerous game cartridge ever made. The mighty 505 Gibbs enchanted us in Hemingway's literature and left us awestruck when J.A. Hunter spoke of its effectiveness. It's been around for 113 years, and it still keeps us interested today. But for those of us who could put nostalgia aside, the 505 Gibbs is probably not a practical cartridge right now. In fact, it might be a dying cartridge right now. But if that's the case, then let me die with it, because I'll always love the 505 Gibbs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about an iconic and legendary dangerous game hunting cartridge, the 505 Gibbs. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.